Hello everyone, my name is Chris50 and today I'm presenting Context Aware Meta Learning. This is the official video for iPlayer 2024. In context learning is a seminal characteristic of large language models. It allows generative language models to do few shot classification, specifically classifying text from only a few examples by autoregressively generating the label. In this example, we're classifying the sentiment of movie reviews as either positive or negative by autoregressively generating positive or negative after the text of a movie review. But in-context learning is actually even more powerful than the previous example. It's conceivable that movie reviews were part of the training data set. But in-context learning can actually extrapolate to tasks that were most certainly not seen during training. In this example, we provide ChatGPT with a made-up language and ask it to translate it to English. And remarkably, it can recognize the patterns within other translations that has also been trained on to correctly tra translate this language, this made-up language to English. So language models like ChatGPT are both fast in general. They can adapt to new examples without fine tuning. And this is critical because these sorts of models see tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of queries a minute. You don't have the space or the time to update the model's parameters with respect to each of these queries to return an answer. And they're also very general. They can extrapolate to new concepts, very unlike those seen during training as demonstrated by our made up language example. But what about computer vision? What is sort of the analog of large language models in computer vision, this notion of both being fast and extremely general? Well, few shot image classification actually has an incredibly rich, rich history spanning back across the last three decades, where you want to use very few labeled examples, very few labeled images to classify an unlabeled image. So you might imagine that a model trained on the images to the right will learn to identify the object within an image to then classify unlabeled images. So for example, if there's an image of a chicken, or if there's a picture of a chicken in this image, you want to identify that and then say, okay, this picture belongs to the chicken class. But these very same sort of few shot demonstrations can actually encode a different axis of classification. Specifically in the second example, you might want to classify by the textures which are present in this image. So looking at how the texture is different across the images in our support set to then classify the unlabeled images. Previous few shot methods typically fall into one of two categories. Metric based approaches are often extremely fast. They can classify unlabeled examples within a single forward pass, but struggle when the meta training distribution departs from the testing distribution. Using our previous example, if the training set predominantly consists of classification by object, then these approaches often struggle when the classification paradigm shifts to classification by texture. On the other hand, we have slower approaches that are much more general. These approaches can extrapolate to new concepts, unlike anything seen during training, by backpropagating on the support set to learn the new classification paradigm. And these are the gradient-based approaches like MAML or fine-tuning the model on the support set, LoRa, so on and so forth. Our approach tries to get at the middle ground between extremely fast meta-learning algorithms and those that are general. We want to classify images in a single forward pass without doing any sort of backpropagation, but we also want the model to be extremely general. It should be able to dynamically adapt to new classification paradigms within its forward pass. Going back to our earlier example, we want the model to be able to recognize the visual characteristics a human would index on to classify a given support set and query image pairing. So for certain pairings, our meta learner should be, able, should be looking at the objects within an image to classify the unlabeled image. However, for that same support set, but a different unlabeled image, we want the model to be able to dynamically adapt to this new classification setting. For example, replacing the query image of a tower with an image of embroidery should cause the meta learner to now consider the textures within an image and how those differ within the support set and between the support set and query image to make a classification decision. The key idea underpinning our approach is to formulate visual meta learning as non-causal sequence modeling. So really considering the entire context of support set images and query image together to identify the axes of variability, specifically the visual characteristics that are most different to classify the query. We find that CAMEL is extremely fast. By design, it can classify images within a single forward pass, but it is also extremely general. Without meta training on downstream benchmarks, it can master performance of state-of-the-art meta learners that have been meta trained on each of these benchmarks. If you found this presentation engaging, I would encourage you to read our paper in the Proceedings of iClear or to fork our GitHub repository. And I appreciate this opportunity to present our work. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.